So everyone who's looked at Dark Angel's lore for more than five seconds knows that Lionel Johnson, the Primarch with one of the least creative names around right up there with Ferris, Iron Hands for the Iron Hands, Manus, isn't actually dead. Nah, the man's just having a 10,000 year long nap. To be fair, fighting your own mini version of the duel between Horus and Big E will do that to anyone, so he's probably earned it. That being said, if there was a Primarch who ever needed to come back besides Gilliman, the Lion is probably that guy. He was a great tactician, if not the best strategist, so any battlefield you throw him at is probably going to be resolved in the appearing favor within short order. That's not even counting things like his martial prowess, the magical powers he may or may not have had, and the fact that the Dark Angel storyline could not be any less subtle about him returning if Games Workshop just released a photo of a giant neon sign that says the lion is coming on it. He's coming one day, and I'm willing to bet that day will be soon. Soon by GW standards, anyway. Everyone watching this may very well have had time to marry and have children by the time it happens. Theoretically, there's all sorts of reasons for him to come back that could really breathe some life into the setting. Even beyond that, overall, he's just a pretty cool dude. Very flawed, but what he does he does extremely well. But you know what? They should not bring him back next. He should not be the second Loyalist Primarch to return. Because he would come back in the absolute most infuriating way possible. I would bet insulin on it. Now that should tell you how serious I am about the matter already, but I will give some reasons for it too if you aren't already swayed. Similar to Lehman Russ, the Lion is supposed to come back for some final battle, some last glorious fight against the horrors of the galaxy. I mean, the Jawas in the dark took him away to heal up so he could be ready for it after all. They're not just gonna bring him back because it's Tuesday and they're bored. But that raises the the biggest issue I have with the scenario that he would be coming back for. Well, I mean, first we gotta ignore that the galaxy being split in half really seems to be a crisis worthy of releasing the fucker from his bedchamber, but whatever, I guess. In my mind, given everything about his return that's been set up, I feel like the situation he comes back will be one of two things, and both of those things are awful. The first one is Warhammer 40k End Times. If you know anything about the End Times, you know this would be very bad. It would be as well received an installment of 40k as The Last Jedi was for Star Wars, only with the added benefit of it destroying the universe. Here's how I would see it going down. Things would start going horribly for the Imperium, and I mean more horribly than half the galaxy imploding on itself. Tyranids start eating more worlds, Abaddon starts to actually do something meaningful, the Eldar do something positive, but they're all Xeno, so obviously it has to get shut down. The works. Then, in the darkest hour, as King Furry returns to the Wolf Wolves, the Lion 2 will make his triumphant return. In the Imperium's final hour, he will return to save the day and prevent the galaxy from completely collapsing. And in the end, all the contributions and sacrifices he might make will mean absolutely nothing. For K is dead, no more setting, Age of Gilimar coming to a games workshop near you next summer. Eat shit everyone, now we get Ultra Primaris Marines to match the Stormcast. Now admittedly this is the least likely situation because sinking the 40k ship would bring GW right down with it. What's most likely to happen is far less drastic, but to be honest, it's also infinitely more boring for it. In option 2, something bad will still be happening. Games Workshop might even fib and say that this event will cause the end of the Imperium and perhaps the whole galaxy, but luckily the Watchers in the Dark will realize that now is the time to act. They will Awaken the Lion, he will return and cause everything to go back to exactly where it always has been. In a state of emergency where things are about to get really bad, but not quite at the point of collapse yet. Now don't get me wrong, I think the Lion returning will result in some cool things happening. Whatever happens with the Fallen will undoubtedly be interesting in one way or another, and I'm sure he and Gilliman will have some interesting ideas on what's really the best way to run the Imperium. But realistically, I don't see GW making another massive shakeup like the Great Rift anytime soon, and even that was still just things being brought back to about to get really bad, but still okay for now. At most, I can imagine imagine that Gilliman and him would argue on how best to run the Imperium and fail to reach a compromise. At which point G-Man goes, alright fuckface, this empire is basically two empires at this point. I woke up first, so I get the part with Daddy in it. You can go have the shitty part and run it however the hell you want. Maybe they could do something like how the Roman Empire was split into the Eastern and Western Empires, with one side very much on its way out, but still a dominant power. That'd be cool and interesting, which is why I think it's unlikely. Moody. I'm willing to bet though that that's very much the best case scenario for what would happen with the Lion returning. What I think is most likely gonna happen is he comes back Back, Gilliman and him argue, and then they both go, well, we have bigger issues to worry about, so let's put this brotherly argument aside for when the galaxy doesn't have a massive gaping demonic vagina cutting across it. And while bringing back any of the Primarchs naturally shakes the setting up, I still feel it'll be in a way that ultimately ends with the galaxy going back to the way it already is, just with a few extra bells and whistles attached. So with that in mind, who should come back instead of the Lion? Why, none other than the Praetorian of Terra himself, of course. I genuinely think that Rogaldorn should be the next Primarch to return, and no, I promise I'm not just trying to suck up to Valrak with this video. This is a genuine opinion that I have. Here's why. If something has the potential to massively shake up the setting, Games Workshop probably isn't going to do it. The status quo is the name of the game in 40k, and while the Lion has the potential to change things, it's for that very reason he won't and shouldn't return. At least not right away. The company won't allow him to change things up to his full potential. But Rogel Dorn? He can mix things up in ways that won't cause galaxy-altering change immediately while still giving room for some interesting developments down the line. Let me walk you through my incomprehensible thought process on this one. Dorn's always been a stubborn bastard to say the least, and the man wasn't shy 
shy about what was saying on his mind. If he thought you were deserving of death, he would be sure to let you know, shortly before giving you death, as Alfarius found out. Also, off topic, but I just want to preemptively say, Alfarius is very much dead. I don't care how many people are going to put comments in the video saying, I am Alfarius. He's dead and you can't make that any less true just because my Alpha Legion mystery. All the schemes in the world can't unchain sword his head. Anyways, Dorne does not give a shit about what others say should be done. If he thinks something has to be done a certain way, he's going to do it that way. And when Gilliman came up with that fancy little book of his, Dorne initially politely told him to get bent over a traffic cone. He hated the idea of anyone splitting his sons up and made sure to tell Grandpa Smurf what he thought. So let's take Dorne, send him 10,000 years forward into the future, and let him see just how shite the Imperium has become. He's going to go ballistic. He's going to march right up to Ultramar and go, yeah, Gilliman, how'd splitting up the legions work out, you dumb prick? Dorne's return could bring back something close to the Space Marine Legions as he organized the fist back together once more, allowing for bigger battles and setting the stage for more to come. In fact, if this sort of thing happens, it might even lead into the Lion coming back as well. If there's a battle between loyalists and traitor legions in modern 40k, surely that would ward Waken Sleeping Beauty up, no? He could change the Imperium up without completely revoking its identity. Gilliman is already the master statesman getting rid of the corruption, he can handle the civic side of fixing it. Meanwhile, Dorne can head right onto the field, fortifying the areas that would benefit the Imperium most. I mean, he was able to keep Horus and gang out for a while during the biggest battle the Imperium had ever seen. I imagine he can build a wall to keep out a few stray orcs. Now I'm gonna flop my contrarian opinion cock on the table and say that I think it'd be best for the narrative that the Imperium finally kicks the bucket. But since that's never gonna happen, the best way to go about fixing it would be to bring back the guy whose whole shtick is fortifying things to hell and back. He's a great commander as well, but still retains flaws that make him not just a Mary Sue. Man who's putting world after world back into the Imperium's lovingly hateful embrace during the Crusade. I mean, yeah, the Iron Cage was resoundingly stupid. I don't really care about his honor when the end result was still splitting the fist up anyways, only this time with a quarter of the chapters he could have made if he didn't try and headbutt Pertorabo's fortress to death, but when he isn't thinking with his self-loathing instead of his brain, he gets shit done. And of course, good at combat. Maybe not as much as the traitor Primarch still left, or potentially even Gilliman, but once again, he killed Alfaria super dead, so he's got some credentials backing him even beyond being a goddamn Primarch. And while admittedly I can't find any lore supporting it, I also couldn't find any explicitly against it, so I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Dorne might be willing to make some compromises when he needs to in terms of dealing with all the enemies of the galaxy. Sure, the Tau are a pain, but compared to the other threats of the galaxy, they aren't trying to eat everybody's body and or souls. The Elder may be giant pricks, but maybe Eldred could come along and say, I tried to tell the Twink not to touch the penis sword and he didn't listen, are you gonna listen to me instead? You'd have some more interesting cross-race narratives in 40k, you know, get a Lord of the Rings vibe going. I do think Dorne could have some room to try and make things work with everyone. Imperium first, of course, don't get me wrong, but Dorne's a logical guy most of the time. He'll work some diplomacy magic if he has to, or at the very least point someone toward Gilliman so he can do it. As for him being dead, I mean, come on. The way he died is the most textbook not actually dead case you could imagine. They found his hand and not his body. Like seriously, that's textbook for he's not actually dead guys, trust us, seriously. Besides, a bunch of world eaters marines? I refuse to believe any Primarch could die to those clue eaters. What's the excuse, Dorn was a little bit tired? It took Sanguinius three days of straight fighting for him to be tired in time for the final battle with Horus. Dorn's not gonna need to lie down for a breather just cause he had to put a few dozen red painted douchebags in their place. I don't care if it makes sense or not, Dorn would not die to a bunch of cornate cunt brains. They don't have any advantage over him in strength because he's a goddamn Primarch. They aren't iron warriors, so there's no grudge BS going on here to keep him from thinking straight. It didn't happen. I invite all Corn fans are gonna bitch it in the comments to kindly go pound sand. And of course, the last and ultimate reason, the Imperial Fists are yellow. Iandin, the craft word I use, is yellow. I mean, I gotta stick with my yellow compatriots, it's as simple as that. So clearly, this means Doran should be and will be coming back before anyone else does. All this being said, who do you think should come back first? I mean, the funny thing about this video is that it's entirely opinionated. I know, opinions are scary because you can't prove them factually wrong, but I'd like to hear other people's opinion on it. Am I totally wrong and you think the socially brain-dead Angel of Caliban would make the best Primarch to return next? Do you agree with me and also simp for the funny yellow mustache man? Do you think it should be someone else? Let me know in the comments. Now. Do it right now. I'm not fucking kidding. Go do it or I swear to god I'm gonna- Thank you of course to my channel members. You are the... Uh... The Rogel door into my Imperial Palace, fortifying my ability to hold against the coming storm. There's not really a storm coming, so I don't know what I'm fortifying against, but I appreciate the support nonetheless. If you would like to support, consider becoming a member or subscribing so the Funny Warhammer Man can reach the Funny Warhammer number. Thank you all for watching and take care out there. Rogel Dorn. Dogel Rorn. Rogel Roared.